Hello, my name is Ina Braverman, founder and CEO of EcoWave Power. And today I will take you a, a little bit through kind of EcoWave Power's journey and the achievements that we have made and our plans for the future. So uh, if we look at the kind of the general global renewable energy trends, we see that the global renewable energy capacity is expected to grow by 50% from 2019 to 2024 in terms of market value. It was about 311 billion in 2019 and is projected to reach 436 billion by 2025. Renewables are set to account for 95% of the net increase in global power capacity between 2020 till the year 2025. And it should, according to forecasts, it could supply almost 30% of global power demand by the year 2023. So the year that we are now at. So if you look specifically at wave energy and um, why wave energy is actually an important source to include in the renewable energy uh, options is first of all because 2.4 billion people which are nearly 40 percent of the global population are currently living on the coastline so they could get uh, renewable energy from the coastline directly to their households which makes it an easier and a cheaper transmission way uh, the density of water is 832 times greater than density of air meaning we can produce much larger electricity amounts with much smaller, just cheaper devices. Wave energy can also operate 24 seven around the clock, as opposed to solar energy, which is an amazing source, but it can only uh, produce energy during the day and not when there's winter or cloud coverage and so on. And now if we look more specifically into the possibilities in wave energy, we see that according to the US Energy Information Administration, wave energy on its own can supply up to 66% of all the United States energy needs. Uh, if we're looking at the European market, uh, the successful deployment of wave energy is expected to produce 10% of all Europe's electricity needs by the year 2050. And if we look on the global scale, according to the World Energy Council, wave energy can produce twice the amount of electricity that the world produces today, which is really a game changer. So at this point, usually the question that is asked is if wave energy is so great, why don't we see wave energy farms everywhere? Why didn't it commercialize? And the answer kind of lies in the photo before you. Here we see a company called Pelamis. They make kind of a big red snake in the middle of the ocean. And in inside of this big floating snake, there was all the expensive equipment of the conversion unit. And 99% of the competitors in the wave energy industry decided to operate in the offshore, which is four or five kilometers into the sea. And this created four main problems. First of all, the prices were sky high. In order to install in the offshore, you need ships and divers and underwater mooring and cables. So very small installations end up costing very high prices. Like Pelamis cost around $150 million in development costs for a power station for a few hundred households. And a second problem was the low uh, reliability of those systems. In the offshore, you have waves of 20 meters or even higher. And unfortunately, no man-made equipment can survive the loads of a 20 meters wave height. So Pelamis, for example, broke down after three days of operation on the coastline of Portugal. So $150 million of investment in development basically sunk into the ocean. Uh, insurance companies saw that it's so expensive and it's breaking down all the time. They were reluctant to insure offshore wave energy installations. And environmentalists, which were supposed to be the greatest supporters and proponents of wave energy, were actually objecting it because it created a new presence on the ocean floor that disturbed the marine environment. And on top of everything, these companies, these offshore companies, got so preoccupied with trying to lower their costs that most of them never got the chance to connect to the electrical grid. So there became a big question mark on whether wave energy can even safely connect to the electrical grid. So what we see on the screen right now, it's a completely different solution. This is EcoWave Power. We don't go into the offshore, we install on existent man-made structures such as piers, breakwaters, jetties, and other types of structures. The only thing in the water are the floaters which belong in the water. And all the expensive system is located on land, just like a regular power station. So it's a simple yet smart system. So how does the technology work? Our floaters are attached to existing structures, as I said before. They're going up and down with the movement of the waves. They're pushing the hydraulic cylinder, which transmits biodegradable fluid into land-located accumulators. A pressure is being built, which is used to turn the hydromotor, turning the generator, and sending clean electricity to the grid via an inverter. Here we can see the installation and grid connection works of our Gibraltar power station. 
as I said before, uh, because we're connecting to existing structures, uh, we can use simple uh, equipment such as forklifts and crane in order to install and maintain the equipment. We don't need ships or divers or underwater works, which makes the programming of the work much easier and also more cost efficient. Here we can see the Gibraltar power station from the outside and the inside. So the only thing in the water are the floaters which belong in the water and all our expensive or sensitive equipment is located on land, just like a regular power station, which is being shipped to site inside a regular shipping container. One side of the container connects to the floaters, the other side connects to the grid. So there's not a lot of construction that has to be done on the site. Another advantage of our technology is that usually the breakwaters are located inside ports Ports are high consumers of electricity. So usually there is a substation or a grid connection point located in proximity to the power station. So as opposed to wind turbines that have to be built very remotely from population density centers, wave energy actually is built very close to population density centers. So the transmission costs and the grid connection costs are much, much uh, lower. Uh, in addition, breakwaters are not prime real estate. They're not being used for anything other than breaking the waves. And we're taking basically these bulky, huge cement structures, which already kind of interfered with the environment and turn it to a source of clean electricity. So in most of our projects, uh, we don't have any cost uh, or almost any cost associated with uh, using the breakwaters or using the location for the implementation of the project. So our advantage is basically that we're cost efficient. Our first grid connected power station that we built was in Gibraltar with an overall cost of $450,000. It's much, much lower when taking into account the cost that I presented before of Pelamis, which was development cost of around $150 million. We were 100% environmentally friendly. We do not connect to the ocean floor. We only install on existing man-made structures, with big bulky cement or stone structures that, you know, that disturb the environment. They're not natural, but they have to be built in order to protect the ports and the coastal population from storms. Our technology is also reliable when the waves are too high for the system to handle, like we see in the video below, the floaters automatically go up above the water level and they stay in the upward position until the storm passes. When the storm passes, they go back into the water and commence operation. And because our technology is both cost efficient and, and uh, reliable, uh, we have insurance from global reputable insurance companies uh, for the operation of the system and the installation of the system. Our company currently holds 18 patents and patents pending. Out of them, uh, 13 patents are already approved, including patents in the US and in Israel, and the uh, five patents are still pending uh, registration. So here we can see a little bit of the history and the milestones of the company. The company was founded in 2011 and we started with wave pool testing. In 2014, we installed our first uh, real condition testing in the port of Jaffa. In 2016, we installed our first grid connected power station, 100 kilowatt installed capacity in Gibraltar with co-funding from ERDF, European Regional Development Fund. In 2019, we became the first Israeli company to ever list on Nasdaq Stockholm. Uh, in 2020, we signed our first large-scale commercial 20 megawatt agreement in Portugal. And in 2021, we secured the first set of licenses for our one megawatt uh, out of the 20 megawatt project in Portugal and uplisted to NASDAQ US with the stock symbol wave. Uh, in 2022, I will finalize the construction of our second grid connect power station, the EWP EDF1 project. Uh, move forward with the implementation of the first one megawatt in Portugal and commence our penetration into the US market where we are planning an implementation of the first project in the port of Los Angeles. In addition, we signed uh, some uh, additional concessions agreement in Spain and in Turkey. So uh, if we look at EcoWave Power's development pathway, as I said, we started in the Hydromechanic Institute in Kiev in 2011. As we can see in the photo here, we were testing different floater shapes to see how the shape actually impacts the energy generation. Between 2014 to 2020, we did our first real conditions testing in Jaffa port. It was an off-grid power station because back then Israel had no legislation for implementation and grid connection of wave energy devices. In 2016, we deployed our first grid connected power station. And now we're already deploying our second grid connected power station here in Israel, uh, which is 50% funded by the Israeli Energy Ministry. 
of the government of Israel and 50% by EDF Renewables IL, a subsidiary of and Electricita de France, the French National Electrical Company. And this is the first time in the history of Israel that wave energy is officially connected to the Israeli electrical grid through a power purchase agreement. So here we can see the inside of our newest power station of the Israeli power station during dry testing with a representative from our company, a representative from EDF, our partners, and a representative from Siemens, who are our strategic partners for the project. They do everything from the generator to the inverter to the grid connection of the project. Here we can see the grid connection works of the Israeli project. As I said uh, before, because uh, the project is located inside of a port, we don't need very long connection line. Uh, the, the whole grid connection line is only 170 meters from the grid connection point, which enables a very, very easy work and no need to do any grid connection works within the ocean or the sea. So here we can see our plans for the future. So we're planning to this year officially open and start the regular operation of our Israeli grid connected project, the EWPDF1 project. Next project that we're planning to launch is our first project in the United States in Alta Seas premises in the port of Los Angeles. Uh, in the same time, a legislation is being uh, promoted in Los Angeles by Senator Padilla. Uh, for uh, the implementation, the wide implementation of wave energy, which we're very excited about. And our first commercial scale project is planned to be in Portugal, where we have a 20 megawatt concession agreement. We're planning to start with the first one megawatt in the city of Porto. Uh, this month, uh, we're expecting to receive the final license, which will enable us to start the construction and really open the first commercial scale wave energy installation in the world, for which we're planning to prove that Wave energy is not only cost efficient, reliable, insurable, safely connected to the grid and environmentally friendly, but wave energy can actually generate significant energy amounts and become profitable. So the company currently holds 404.7 megawatts in its project pipeline, including projects in Europe, Asia, United States, Oceania, North America, and South America. And then we're working according to three different uh, revenue models. The first one is joint venture or turnkey. Uh, this is a structure that we're doing with EDF. We did a 50-50 joint, joint venture uh, that is uh, responsible for the Israeli development. We can also work with BOT when we build on and then operate and then transfer the power stations to institutional investors who can pay premium price to purchase the power stations. And our most preferred uh, revenue model is BOO when we build on and operate the power stations, because then basically we build and develop multiple assets, we hold them on our balance sheet, and we make our revenues from selling the electricity to the grid from these multiple assets. So why co-wave power is a winning combination? First of all, most of the wave energy companies in the world are still in very early R&D stages. Ecowave power already has a project a pipeline of 404.7 megawatts worldwide. We have significant operational experience in real conditions. Uh, we operated for six, year, our, six years our Gibraltar grid connected power station and now started to operate our second grid connected power station here in Israel. We have support from the research community. According to IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency, they believe that point absorbers, which is the technology uh, such as Ecowave Powers technology, will dominate the wave energy market in the near future. And we have strong strategic partnerships like with EDF, uh, with Meridian Energy, and with Alta C in the port of LA for our penetration to the US market. So I would like to finish my presentation by, by saying that, you know, although I'm not objective, I'm a strong believer in wave energy, I do believe that the solutions for the solution for the world problems and pollution problems is basically in combining all renewable energy sources, wind, solar, wave, and any other source because each country is rich in different sources during different times and different seasons. That's why one of our recent patents is basically adding solar panels on top of our floaters. We don't do like our competitors, we don't put the expensive equipment inside the floaters, so we don't need access to the inside of the floaters. So we can easy, easily use the surface of the floaters to install and uh, solar panels for additional energy. And our company is recognized by the United Nations we won the Global Climate Action Award by Solar Impulse Foundation as an efficient solution. 
were part of the Sustainable Markets Initiative of King Charles and the World Economic Forum and were recognized by the European Commission. Thank you.